Hello, friends. So, of mimicry and meant by homic bhava. So, we have seen that the ambivalence, the two classic texts that proclaims the ambivalence of colonial mimicry are first one is John Locke's. John, the philosopher John Locke. John Locke's definition of slave, we have already seen that. In the state of Carolina, this is a rightful possession, but state of nature, that is the what we call right, the created nature. State of nature means God created nature. It is it, it goes against all the uh, considerations of human rights or a total violation of human rights we can say. So that is the that is the ambivalence. Two meanings, two views, double vision. Understand? Then another text is Freud. Freud's text. And this definition of fantasy. What is fantasy? No. Here it is definition of slave, two meanings. Here is fantasy. Fantasy that is between subconscious subconscious and pre-conscious. Or he says it is like a mixed race, people of mixed race. Here it is slave in one place and slave in another place. Here it is violation of human rights. Human rights. Here it is lawful possession. Lawful possession. Understand? In the state of Carolina, State means like it is, you know, Mumbai, was Maharashtra state, or this uh, Chennai state, Karnataka state, that is the state means. The, the other state is, that is created, uh, that, the, that is the state of life, state of nature. I hope you understand without my. <coughs> Harping on the same issue again and again. With God created nature, that's all. God created nature. It is violation of human rights. So ambivalence. That's ambivalence. Two meanings coexisting to one positive, one negative. And here they are in between us, you can see. In between us. Ambivalence means. At least I hope that you have understood. I have been we have been uh, discussing these points. Again and again. I think that in one of my lectures, when I wrote Locke, John Locke, I, 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 I missed that E. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I wrote it like this L O C K. So, John Locke, in one of my lectures, I wrote John Locke like this. And that is wrong. So, John Locke is this one. There is no John Locke, like a for example, again, you speak about uh, Godred Locke. <laughs> it's not like that. That will be a classroom over here. John Locke. I think it was in my second lecture also on this same topic. Okay, you will excuse me for that. And I am, but we go mea culpa, you know. That is my fault. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. That means my fault, my fault, my great fault. I hope you will excuse me. Okay. So here we come today, our next uh, topic to discuss is the menace, M-E-N-S-E, the menace or the effect, the effect of, effect of uh, mimicry, colonial mimicry, mimicry, the effect of colonial mimicry or the menace, menace means the danger, the dangers of colonial mimicry. There are about more than 24 dangers I can list. We will do half of it today. Okay. And then we will see the rest of how we will do tomorrow. The, the first effect is the effect of caste pressure. Caste pressure. You know, you have heard of caste trading animals. When the essence is taken off, colonial man's essence is taken off, he becomes a half man's source. That's post colonial. I need not explain, and the essence is taken, who are you? You are nothing. See? So, our position in the 
in the colonial world is like that. We are, we are nothing, we are all right, we are nothing. you cannot represent yourself. Listen. Second is, you can see this, shatters your identity. Shatters one's identity. That means, you have no selfhood. Your selfhood is taken. Understand that? Black man, black man, stop being an actual person. Black man means, we are also included in that. Brown, black and brown. Only the white man can represent his self esteem That is shattering your identity. You are an insider, but you are an outsider. You are, a, you are a, a citizen, but you are an exile in your own country. That is shattering your identity. You got the point. Essence is lost there also. And third is a colonial double. You become a colonial double. That is, you are a colonial double means what? In castrating effect, means for the colonizer, you are one, you are one, you are a slave. But for us, we imagine or we just think that a kind of a consolation that we are citizens of a country. So double vision is there. Understand? And for this, history becomes a farce. History becomes a farce. So you know, I have, I think I have mentioned somewhere, 1857, uh, the, uh, the Sepoy mutiny, see that, that is, for the colonizer, it is a revolt against the legitimate government. But for us, it is first independence struggle. History becomes a farce. Double mission history becomes a farce. Then you see, civilizing mission becomes a farce. Civilizing mission. Mission becomes a farce. That's also, there is nothing in it. Is it? See now, we want, do you remember? We want Indians in color. Some persons, Indian in color and blood. But they should think and behave as we, we say. Lord Macaulay, infamous minutes. Colonial policy is colonial dependence. Listen, Lord Rosbery, it is ripped by the finger of heaven. You are all slaves. That's what it is. So that is, you are? Civilizing mission is a farce. When you think about even preaching the Bible is a farce, right? Because you preach the Bible at the same time you preach the colonial philosophy, colonial views. And then you can see sixth one is it is an epistemic violence. Epistemic violence. What is epistemic violence means? You are doing violence to knowledge. There is no no, nothing sincere about what is. Understand? So it is epistemic. And seventh is the colonial subject is always under, always under intimidation, under gaze. Is that is under intimidation? If you don't behave properly, you will be beaten up. Understand? So that kind of thing. See that? Then what happens is artificial performance. Artificial performance. For what? For pleasing the master. Who is the master? Pleasing the master. Yes, for pleasing the master, artificial performance. A e. M. Foster, novel. A passage to India, there is a character, Amrit Rao. He is a Calcutta lawyer who received English education. What is he doing? He is harassing the natives 
For what? For pleasing the whole earth. Pleasing his master. Amrit Rao. A lawyer. Amrit Rao. Amrit Rao. So he is a Calcutta lawyer. He's an Indian. But he brought up under this colonial mission. Then what happened is he is in the process to India, he fosters. What is he doing? He is to please his masters. He is harassing the Indians, his brethren. So that is artificial performance. That's not natural. I think you have taken these things down, points by points. So now you'll see uh, castrating, castration, double, double vision, double the artificial performance. Then you, you can see there is a there is a tendency to copy the behavior of the master. You have the tendency. For example, Tony Morrison's novel, The Blue Eyes. Tony Morrison. Okay, uh, that is nine. Tendency to copy. To copy the foreigner. Foreigner. That is, you can see this happens with many people. Very clearly stated in Tony Morrison's novel, Tony Morrison, The Blue Eyes. The Blue Eyes. There, there is a character, a girl, pure, and she, she is, she is, her ambition is to have blue eyes. Why? Because these colonizers, they have got the blue eyes. But we know that black eyes is more beautiful than blue eyes. But they are trying to do this. Understand? We are snipers, colonial politician, snipers. Naipaul's colonial politician. Politician is politi politician is a play actor. He is not he is not a politician, but is he is acting a play for these people. An actor. You almost we can understand the double role that the person is playing. Understand? And then you can see Tony Morrison and B.S. Nepal, yes. You have seen that. Uh, and uh, now you can see, at the tenth point you can see what you, you see is, at the tenth point is, uh, oh, we have seen now about nine, he becomes an authorized version of the other. Means the colonized is the other. And that is authorized. Authorized by whom? Authorized by the colonizer. So the colonizer, the dominant, gives his stamp on you. Who are you? You are the other. You are fixed as the other. Understand? And then, eleven is you have a traumatic experience. Traumatic experience. What is traumatic experience? It's a terrible experience. Listen. Suppose you are taken by, you are in, you are uh, abducted by a group of dacoits. They take you to their place, their den, B and den, cave. Or the place of the resident, they beat you up, they throw steel, they rob you, they beat you, and then take out your, you have two eyes, no? the dagoids will say, oh, one is enough, you take it out. You have two, two hands, one is cut and taken, and then you are thrown in the forest somewhere, then somebody comes and rescues. So that experience is called a traumatic experience. A terrible experience. Something that you cannot explain. An inexplicable experience. Incomparable experience. In a way, a very unique experience also. That is a foolish thing to say like that, but 
is a terrible experience. Understand? Suppose you are, you are taken like that. You remember in Alibaba and Forty Thieves, Alibaba's eldest brother, he goes inside the cave. Then what happens, you know? They catch him and they, before killing him, before murdering, murdering him in cold blood, they give him a traumatic experience. That is that, is that experience. Beating them, kicking them, and uh, at last throwing them in a, in a pool of boiling water or boiling oil. So that is a traumatic experience. So that kind of experience you have in a situation of colonization. Traumatic experience. And you know Benedict Andres, you have heard of Benedict Andres. He says, 12, Benedict Anderson. Benedict Anderson. He says, in a situation like this, the empire rises, the national vanishes. The empire rises. The national vanishes. This is the net effect of colonization. The empire rises and the national vanishes. The colonized people is colonized people are just scene suggests of an opera. Scene suggests. Scene suggests of an opera. Scene suggests. Means you are not allowed to participate. There is no chance to participate. What happened? You can arrange the table, chair, a curtain, the lighting, and, all, and then go by. <coughs> so a colonized person is mere scene service. Understand? And what does finance say? The other spontaneity. That's what we are going to take. <coughs> That's the final series. The figure is fixed. The figure of the colonized is fixed. There is no appeal. That's it. You are denied all human rights. So the figure is fixed. That's the 14th point. The figure is fixed. There is no chance of no appeal. You can see this point one after another, you can see almost the same. But you are giving in different versions like this. Castration, double, loss of your identity, shattering of your identity, imitating the phone, trying to imitate the phone, artificial performance. When you say history becomes a farce, epistemological violence. So, so knowledge is a farce. Epistemology. Always under intimidation of gays, CCTV experience. You have a CCTV experience. Then you are, then you have got to, in these novels of those days, you can see the characters. Writers are presented characters like Pierre, who are hoping to get a, get a pair of blue eyes. See that? Then you can see the play actor. V.S. Nainpal's politician is a play actor. You are only mere scene setters. That means you are an insider, but you are outside. Yeah, that's also you can say. Insider, outside. Inside, outside situation. Inside, yes, 15th you can say, inside, outside. A 16th one you can say, you are a refugee in your own land. You are a refugee in your own land. Understand? A refugee in your own land, native place. So that's what we can say. This is some of the ways to describe the traumatic experience or the menace or the effects of colonization. We we'll continue with this in the next class because 14, 15, 16 points is too much for you to, to it's a burden, maybe a burden only. So I, I think that I should stop because these are points, you know. 
points you yourself can together we can expand further. I have already expanded sufficient means for you people is enough, I am sure. This much of explanation is 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 enough. If I go on giving speeches on the colonizable what the men may understood. And that's why I am not uh, unnecessarily explaining and uh, to to what I to what I must say is to bore you know. <laughs> so, things that you already know, if I go on explaining then that would be uh, that will cause boredom to you. Uh, that's why I thought that points and the sufficient explanation is there. If you want any further explanation, visit my site englishforme.in and you can contact me, definitely I will give you a more explanation and uh, further reading materials. I mean, I will uh, give you references so that you can uh, get hold of the reading materials and uh, read or enrich this. I think that this is okay, you are uh, feeling well, uh, we will see you again tomorrow, until then, bye bye.